Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about the nature of Atlantic conservatism, or what I like to call classical Toryism, could be called progressive conservative Toryism, sometimes called the Red Tory movement. Um, I don't like the uh, term the Red Tory movement because it's, uh, if you use it in the, in the sense Gad Harowitz in his classic uh, sociological art article uses it, then I, I think it fits, but it's been redefined in recent years, and Scott Bryson, who's my federal counterpart, um, he and I would always argue when he was still a Tory, uh, and he defined the Red Tory movement simply in support of uh, uh, support for same-sex marriages, and I felt that that was uh, really not what the Red Tory movement was about, so I started talking about classical Toryism instead as being a better moniker rather than the Red Toryism. And, and the, the influence, the, the classical Tory tradition in Atlantic Canada, um, I don't have time to talk about all the aspects of it, but I want to uh, center upon four different themes. One is the overriding importance and influence of the British Tory tradition. Now, all Tories across Canada share aspects of that, but it's stronger in Atlantic Canada and perhaps parts of Ontario than it is uh, in the rest of Canada, in my opinion. Number two is the conflicted self-image that we have vis-a-vis -vis confederation, uh, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Number three is the importance of government in the economy, uh, which differentiates us from uh, Western Canada. And uh, the last one is the rootedness of maritime culture and the influence that that has upon all political parties, and imper uh, especially upon the, uh, the Tory party. Uh, the influence of, of British Toryism is, is very, very strong in Atlantic Canada, uh, and there's seven key aspects to this. Uh, and as I said, these are shared in various forms in Tory movements across Canada, uh, so it's not that we're unique in this way, but I think they are stronger in Atlantic Canada than other areas. Uh, the obligation of the more fortunate towards the less fortunate, which can be somewhat paternalistic, but certainly comes out of the classical tradition in, in Britain. Uh, both the more fortunate economically and educationally caring and helping those less fortunate. Two, uh, an understanding of human and institutional fallibility. Coming out of my religious background, I talk about original sin and the influence that has, but an understanding that all institutions are fallible. Uh, number three, the priority of the community, which I think was already mentioned over the individual, that to have a healthy individual, you have to have a healthy community. And of course, um, much of the uh, intellectual background work for this comes, of course, from Edmund Burke, and particularly if there's one work you want to read of Burke's is his, um, his long article on Reflections on the French Revolution. Uh, peace, order, and good government, uh, the sort of harmonious uh, interrelationship of those, respect for tradition, so respect for religion, respect for the role of culture, respect for education, the conservation of the best, and let me just be a bit uh, partisan here as a former environment minister, I would say that the Tories are the original ones who care for the environment and to, who want to preserve it. You read the writings of George Grant and this comes across very, very strong. Uh, support for meritocracy and uh, an attitude of caution towards change and then uh, respect for hard work. And those are all aspects of British Toryism that appear in all forms of Toryism across Canada, but in their strength and in the fact that people still adhere to them in Atlantic Canada, I think they are, are even uh, stronger. Other factors that uh, mark the uh, progressive conservative, the Tory movement in Atlantic Canada would be the conflicted self-image we have vis-a-vis -vis confederation. When I was uh, studying at Atlantic, uh, at Acadia Divinity College to become a Baptist minister, uh, I found out that John Diefenbaker had uh, given a, a lecture at the university and had donated the honorarium back to the university and so I could win $1,000 if I won this debate. And that was back in the late 70s and $1,000 was a lot of money then. And so I went into the debate and the issue I had, or the side of the debate where I had was Confederation was bad for Canada and I was on the, or good for Canada, I was on the negative side that it was bad for Canada. And I won the debate on one quote alone and that is, I forget who said it, but I remember the quote still to this day, Confederation is like a mail order bra designed to uplift and hold together, instead it's merely drawn attention to the cleavage. <laughs> the judges all burst into laughter and I knew right away I was a thousand dollars richer. Uh, and it's, it's simply because we're proud of our historical, we talk in Nova Scotia for example about the oldest uh, legislator, legislative building in Canada, we're very proud of that, but we also feel that confederation in many ways was a bad deal 
for the uh, East, that we gave up our manufacturing base to Ontario and that we've never recovered from that and that uh, Central Canada owes us something for that sacrifice. And then uh, that leads, I think, inextricably to uh, the greater importance of government in the economy. You can't really, in Atlantic Canada, do business without bumping up against government at all levels. This, I know, frustrates certain business people, but it's, it's part of Atlantic Canada uh, and part, of, part of, of who we are. And then, fifthly, uh, uh, the rootedness of maritime culture. And I think of Simone Weil, the French, uh, uh, the French philosopher's wonderful book, uh, Henri Salmont, uh, and, and it, it speaks so much, even though it was written out of a French context after World War, after, during World War II, but it speaks so much to, the, to the, the attitude that prevails in Atlantic Canada that's so important. Uh, they talk about uh, politics in the East being a religion in the center of business and in West meaning principally, I think, BC entertainment. Uh, and, and, and this, I think, speaks to the rootedness of, 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 uh, of politics and maritime culture and of the Tory movement. Let me just give you two stories that illustrate that and uh, I'll close. One is uh, before I became an MLA and fell from grace, because I'm a Baptist minister and fell from grace went into politics, uh, I um, was active on the executive of our local party and I went to the Kings North PC Women. And, and then later that evening, because a friend of mine was involved with the reform movement, uh, he wanted to invite me to a, a, part, a, a, a meeting at his house. At the Kings North PC Women, the conversation was all about who was related to whom, who was so-and-so's aunt, who was so-and-so's sister, who was the daughter of so-and-so, and were they Tory families or were they liberal families. And that was, that was the bulk of the conversation. At the um, meeting with the Reform, which was a small, far, uh, small, far smaller meeting, it was all about policy and charter schools and whether these were good ideas or not. And that in itself, I think, gives you a picture of, um, of the rootedness of maritime culture and how it is uh, passed on uh, political allegiance from family to family. That's changing, of course. Uh, today, but there's still a, a, a large uh, element of that. I used to go down the road I live on, I could tell them our Anglican, Presbyterian, Baptist, Roman Catholic, now I can go down and say Tory, Liberal, uh, and now NDP, unfortunately, in Nova Scotia. Uh, so the four factors are the strong influence of the British Tory tradition, the conflicted self-image vis-a-vis uh, confederation, the importance of the government and economy, and then the rootedness of maritime culture, which gives us that, that progressive conservative, that flavor that you talked about in Ontario. I was going to read you a quote from, um, from Stanfield. He, he wrote a very interesting paper in 1974 where he defined what a conservative means, and that, that definition still holds true today, but in it he um, criticizes a Manning from out west, and so, in the interest of not criticizing anyone, Cliff, I won't read that quote. 